Hello, hello. I am Dallas Cohen, the Rebound Coach, and you are on the Rebound Coach Live. I am so glad you're here. Um, if this is your first time sharing virtual space with me, first of all, thanks for coming. I don't think it's an accident. There are reasons for everything, and there's a reason why we're sharing some virtual space today. Um, for those of you who are on Clubhouse, hey, we're so glad you're here too. Um, after this portion of the live, we'll have a time to chat. If you're listening to the replay and you're like, what is this all about? Somebody sent this to me. I don't know who you are and why we're here. <laughs> First of all, uh, I want to say hello. Again, I'm Dallas Cohen, the Rebound Coach. And if you're like, what exactly, what is a rebound coach? Like, that doesn't even make sense. So a coach, in my case, a life coach, helps people get unstuck. And I particularly help people rebuild territory in their relationship with themselves. I help women do that. And I came into that because of my own life. Unfortunately, I was married to a man for 10 years who wanted me dead and uh, almost tried his hand at it, uh, which was pretty scary. He and his adulteress were uh, plotting my murder after like uh, 10 years of being married. And so that didn't make a whole lot of sense with the kind of person I was and the kind of person I grew up to be. I was raised in a very strong Christian household, had parents that loved God. They loved each other. They were married for a lifetime. So that completely didn't make sense that this was my life. At the same time, I was molested from the time I was eight to the time I was 16. And that really changes how you see yourself, how you relate to God in a, in a faith-based household. And for me, how I related to men. So fast forward, I met the person I married. Uh, there were definitely red flags present. Um, at the same time as a praying woman, I believed God was with us. And I, hindsight, I have to say, yes, he was, just not in the way I was expecting. <laughs> and I believed that whatever trouble would come, we'd be able to overcome it. Well, trouble came right away and never quite went away. Um, we got into a cycle of what I call coping and crisis, where you're kind of barely making it, and then there's a big blow up, and then you get back to barely making it, and it happens again. Well, things kind of came to a head, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Um, he left for another woman. I found out him and that woman had been plotting my murder, y'all. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> for months by the time I found out. So literally, you know, when you're in a crisis like that, your whole world kind of comes to a grinding halt and you have some pretty big decisions to make. Um, my whole, everything was threatened. You know, you're threatened as a, as a mom, as a wife, as a woman, as a child of God, as a coach. <laughs> I had been uh, coaching on marriage and uh, building covenant marriages for about five or six years by the time all that happened. So if you can imagine building an identity on um, on a certain set of ideals and then that very thing um, being what's very, it felt very public. It may not have been, but it felt like a, a very public, you know, falling apart. And I had, you know, one major decision to make. I could allow the identity that I had previously that my ex-husband had for me, that I had agreed to tell me who I was going to be, who I was allowed to become, or I could choose life. So I've written a book coming out of that whole thing by the grace of God and a series of really divine events. Um, not only am I still alive, but uh, my children and I are safe and thriving. And what I, I've learned a lot, I continue to learn. And what I've learned is that all of us can be caught in a cycle of coping and crisis. And it takes daily, sometimes hourly, sometimes moment to moment decisions for life over and over again um, to not only sustain us in the crazy times, but help us to rise and thrive. So I wrote a book. It's called I Choose Life, Rewrite Your Love Story and Change Your Legacy. And if you identified with any piece of my story, or you like murder mysteries, like <laughs> that also counts. 
um, you want to pick up this book, you can get it at thereboundcoach.com forward slash book. That is thereboundcoach.com forward slash book. You can pick up one of these, uh, order one of these physical copies that I will personally sign and send to you. Or you can get one from Amazon and Bezos will send it to you, <laughs> one or the other. But this will bless your life. So I just encourage you to pick that up. All right. So today we're talking about how to know when to quit. Okay. I don't know about you guys. Have you ever had those days, sometimes those weeks, sometimes those months where you just don't want to anymore? Like whatever the it is, you just you just don't want to anymore. Um, I have to be honest and say I've had some of those recently. Um, we talked about identity changing and I am in a personal season of identity shifting. And so the things that used to fit don't fit the same. The things that used to bring satisfaction don't bring the same satisfaction. And, uh, and it's a little disconcerting. And so maybe you've been in that season or maybe you are in that season where things just um, don't feel the way they used to. And you're not quite sure, uh, do I keep doing this? Do I quit doing this? Maybe you're in a relationship that sounded like mine, where there was a lot of emotional and spiritual abuse going on. Maybe there's mental illness or addiction in your home dynamic. And you're like, um, do I keep doing this or do I not keep doing this? So I want to just bring a couple of thoughts to you that you can consider when you're thinking about whether or not to quit. Because <laughs> sometimes uh, we may quit a dirty word. But sometimes uh, that's an appropriate course to take. So um, giving up can happen in small ways, okay? So it's not always, uh, when we think about quitting, you think about quitting a job or you think about um, quitting a relationship, right? But it's not always um, this big, big movement. Sometimes we quit in, in lots of little small ways ways we're not admitting to ourselves. So when we procrastinate, that's a form of quit, okay? When we just put it off, 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 put it off. <laughs> another year, another two years, another five years, that is, uh, you know, I really don't want to do this thing, whatever the it is, right? Um, when we keep ourselves in distraction, right? So, and I, look, my hand is up. If you're, I know there's folks in the clubhouse who can't see me, but my hand is up, okay? Um, because I do this, right? So, so if I say I want to do a certain thing, but I'm putting it off, putting it off, it's a form of quit. If I keep myself in distraction land, it's a form of quit, right? So there's a discomfort that I am um, subconsciously and sometimes consciously avoiding, right? So think about in relationships, sometimes we can stay in a relationship like a marriage or um, a job relationship where you're still working there, but you are disconnected, right? So that that happens where we're just kind of, uh, I'm there, but I'm not there. I'm there, but I'm not there, okay? Also, um, let's talk about dedication because... Uh, Dedication makes the difference and commitment. So those are two words we use when we talk about um, staying on a thing or quitting a thing, right? Dedication is continuing to do the activity when the feeling is gone, when the motivation is gone. Often in the beginning of a thing, a project, an idea, a passion, we're very excited. I have a couple of really uh, cool events ahead of me in the year and I'm excited, y'all. Um, say so if you've heard, if you've been on this a few times, you've heard of the sanctuary experience. It's coming up soon. Hi, Joanne. I'm so glad that you're here and joining us today on Facebook. Thanks so much. Um, so check it out. Um, dedication is when we continue to do a thing, even, even though the feeling is gone. So, um, so as I was saying a minute ago, so I, uh, I have, I have sanctuary experience coming up September 16th, 17th, 18th. I'm so excited about that. Um, we also, I also have like, this is a big birthday year, y'all. Like, I'm so excited. You don't even understand. <laughs> so, um, so in, when we have new ideas, we're really excited about it. And we're thinking about it all the time. And we're planning things out. And we're putting things in place. And woohoo. 
and no, in any process, in any process, something wonderful, something lifelong, something short term, there's always obstacles. There's always some level of resistance. There's always something to overcome. This is normal stuff. Okay. We always run into it. And there's portions of the project, the job, the marriage, the friendship, the, the anything, your, your health journey. There's portions of it that where your, your motivation for it, the passion, the excitement is like, I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Right. But there's still stuff to do to get to the goal. Right. You're still, there's still a gap between where you are and where you want to be. Right. So it's about, all right, do I stay committed to this? Do I stay um, uh, committed and dedicated to this or is it time to go? So, and think of this too. So there's a difference between I prefer this over that versus I have a conviction to this over that. So for example, people have um, food habits or certain special diets. So someone who is a vegetarian or a vegan per se, some people say, you know, I, you know, I eat plant-based. I, you know, I eat plant-based. That's the way I eat. But if you pass them a burger, they're not going to turn you down. That's a preference as opposed to a conviction, right? Someone who's very strongly convicted about, I don't eat meat because of whatever their reason is. They're strongly convicted. You pass them a burger and they're going to pass it right along, right? You can't tempt them with what they are. Uh, they have a conviction about. So in consideration of whether or not you're going to stay committed to a thing, whether or not you're, you're going to be dedicated to a thing, that's, okay, do I do I have a preference or do I have a conviction? And check it. It's okay to have a preference. It's okay. This is your life. Like it's your life. <laughs> it's not anyone else's life. So your level of conviction over a thing, your level of preference is an okay level. Don't let somebody else tell you what you need to be convicted about. Don't let somebody else tell you, well, you know, you said you were plant-based, but I saw you eating that burger the other day. Like, dude, no shame in the game. This is your life. <laughs> Don't let anybody shame you for your decisions. Now, here's what you should also do. If you say to your friend, in this scenario. Hey friend, I have a new conviction in my life. I would like to not eat meat anymore. And I want you to help me stay accountable. That's a different situation, right? You've asked someone to help you on the path that of commitment on the path of dedication to what you want. In that case, I'm expecting my friend to say something. If they see me eating a burger and I said, I don't, don't get no, uh, don't get no clues, friends. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm committed to that. But uh, but that's what I'm saying. So if you have a conviction over something or you're making one, so people make said convictions on um, New Year's time, you know, they make resolutions and stuff. So if you have someone in your life that you is holding you accountable to a thing, expect them to bring that up. And that's an act of love, okay, when they do that. If you're not asking someone to hold you accountable, that may be an act of judgment. It may not be, but either way, if you're deciding on what you're convicted on and what you're committed to, don't let somebody shame you one way or the other. Live your truth, um, but live it full through. So if you're um, unsure about something, get sure. Does that make sense? So don't, don't be in that indecision place. Not a lot gets done. A lot gets wasted. A lot of energy, time, money gets wasted in that soft in between. I'm not sure. So make a decision one way or the other. Don't beat yourself up no matter what you choose. It's okay to choose differently tomorrow, but be sure of your steps and go ahead and make them. All right. So how do you know when it's time to quit? Here are three things to consider if you're taking notes. Number one, does the goal, okay, or what you're committed to depend on just you, okay? It's what I'm going for. Does this depend on me or does it depend on me and some other people, okay? For example, if you want to make more money, 
if you want to grow your relationship with God or change your spiritual relationship, if you want to lose weight, uh, something of that nature. If you want to be a better blank, I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better employee. I want to be a better business person, right? Any of those things, those goals depend on just you. And you might have arguments with me. I would say it depends on just you, right? Um, you're the driving force in whether or not you make more money. You're the driving force in the kind of fill in the blank you are, the kind of friend, the kind of lover, the kind of spouse, the kind of anything. You're in that driver's seat. So what are the situations that don't depend on just you? Okay. So if there's another person involved, for example, a spouse, if I'm dedicated to having a good marriage, but my spouse is dedicated to abusing me, it doesn't depend on just me. Right? It doesn't depend on just me. So there's tons of advice out there to faith-based women who want better marriages, who are unfortunately in abusive marriages. And they tell those women to have more sex, to be more submitted, to speak kinder, to do more acts of service, to find his love language, to X, Y, Z, whatever the X, Y, Z is, and your spouse will change. There are coaches out there right now. I used to subscribe to these people who will tell you um, we can help women change their marriage without their husband's consent or involvement. I beg to differ. <laughs> I beg to differ. Um, I learned something early on. We have no power to change other people. We have no power to change other people. We can potentially influence people. I'll give you that. But we cannot change any other person. So if your goal depends on another person and that other person is not making moves towards what you want, the activity is, or the choice, I would say, your choice is you can adjust those expectations because just because uh, a spouse is not doing what you want them to do does not necessarily cause for breaking up with the spouse, okay? So that's not, don't hear that. That's not what I'm saying. Abuse is a different issue, but even in abusive situations, no one can make you leave. No one can tell you when enough is enough. No one can tell you what your tolerance level is. No one can tell you that. Not your friends, not your pastor, not people on the internet, not me. Nobody can tell you that. You have to decide for yourself when enough is enough, if enough is enough. And people decide to stay for all sorts of reasons. So um, I, I'm not even the one to pressure you for that. Like everybody literally gets to make their own decision. But that's just it. You get to make your own decision, not anyone else's decision. So if you're, if you're thinking about, does the goal I want or what I'm committed to depend on just me? If that answer is no, it doesn't depend on just me. I need other people to do certain things. You might need to adjust your perspective if you want to stay on that path, right? It may be, okay, how do I get this thing without that person's participation? It's what folks call in, in my industry, uh, staying well. So when there's a destructive spouse, and that spouse is not changing, but a person wants to stay married. Okay, there's some strategy involved in staying well. Staying well means being personally healthy as much as you can in that situation. This is a long story and I'm not trying to go down the rabbit hole, but I, did, I just wanted to say that sometimes you have to adjust perspective, not necessarily quit. And sometimes you need to quit. <laughs> Um, that's what you, and how do you know, like it, when you're in the middle of the mess, when you're in the middle of the swirl of crisis, it's can be really hard to see, you know, beyond your eyes, beyond like your hand in front of your eyes, because it's thick and it's hard. This is where uh, friends come in. This is where counselors come in. This is where trusted advisors come in, coaches it really helps to have someone who's not in the fire look in and give you perspective. 
again, nobody can make your decisions but you. Nobody can make your decisions but you. However, there is wisdom found in a multitude of counselors, trusted counselors, okay? All right, so point number one, how do you know when to quit? Does the goal or the thing that you are committing to depend on just you, okay? If it does, don't quit, keep rocking. If it does not depend on just you, you're either gonna have to adjust some expectations, change your strategy, or you might need to make some changes. All right, point number two, if you're taking notes, how do you know when to quit? Do you still want what you are going after? And why? So in the case of uh, marriage, a lot of people uh, start off, or I would say a lot of women, faith-based women, that's who, that's who I serve, high achieving women of faith, okay? And they set off to get married and they have this idea of what it is they're wanting out of that union. And I happen to serve uh, women who've been through abuse. So um, they're not getting what they want, we're going after, right? So let's think about in the interim, do I still want this thing? Do I still want this? Um, that's not easy. That's not an easy shift, right? And sometimes the season has already passed by the time you're able to really look back and decide, do I still want this or not? So a lot has to change when you're in the thick, um, when crisis is moving, like you don't have time, you're not in the brain space to uh, think through this. So not in crisis mode, but after. So for you who are watching and listening, look backwards, <laughs> look back into your, your past, look back into the season right before now, maybe leading up to now and say, do I still want this? You know, things, things have changed. Do I still, do I still want this? And I'm a fan of lists. I'm a fan of lists and writing out thoughts. So you, a pros and cons list. Uh, I'm going to this church because these are the good things. These are the things I'm not sure that are good. What outweighs? Like really, like really look at it. It doesn't hurt. And it actually brings a lot of clarity. Now it's scary because then you might have to face a decision you might not want to be facing, right? If you look at pros and cons of a thing and there's more bad than good, mm, okay, now what do I do? Now I was going to wait to the end, but um, we can be committed and we are guys we are we're either committed to easy or we are committed to hard hard doesn't mean like all the things are good to go do <laughs> not necessarily but we are we're committed to one or the other now when we're committed to easy right that makes sense right so when when obstacles come we might quit a thing because we're committed to ease right but what about being committed to hard in the book, I write about the glory in the struggle and how that was something struggle was glorified for me as a young person. And so as I got older, I really identified with struggle. And so I and I I'm still breaking this habit, y'all, of getting to a certain point of success and then not pursuing further than that, further than a comfort zone, because I'm comfortable in struggle. That sounds backwards. When you say it out loud, <laughs> but but it, it really happens to a lot of people or you might get a little bit of success and get scared. Like, you know, you've seen people in relationships where it goes too well and then they sabotage somehow. And you can look at that other person and go, oh, my gosh, that's so sad. How how sad for them. But we do this for in our own lives. We all have a comfort level. We all have a comfort level and there's a reason for that. It's a, a, a struggle or a chaos or a dysfunction that we become accustomed to. And we'd rather stay in what we understand even though it's not the best situation versus getting out of that comfort zone and going for the life we say we want. So do you still want what you say you're after and why? If you've done your analysis and you're like, yep, I still want that thing, all right? Find out why, again, write it out. 
This is why this is why I want this thing, right? Okay, write it out. Then refer to number one. Okay, once you're clear on, yes, I do want still want this thing. I, this still aligns with the vision for my life. I know why this aligns with the vision for my life. Okay, great. Refer to number one. Does it depend on just you? Yes. Keep tracking. Does it depend on just you? No. Oh, maybe, okay, we need to do some mitigation. All right. And I'll say this too. If you're looking at a thing and you're like, you know what? I really don't want this anymore. This is not... It's not what I'm after. Also dig into why, okay? If you don't want it anymore because um, you don't think you can, right? That's not truth. It might be your experiential truth, but the reality is you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You actually can. So if there was a yes, you would, right? So then it's about getting the supports you need, getting the strategy you need, bringing in the help you need to get the thing done, right? Okay. But if not, you know, it's also okay to evolve and say, this was the vision for my life. And now the vision for my life is something else. And that's okay. And it doesn't mean that forever I have to be this other thing now. We're allowed to evolve and give yourself the grace to evolve, to change, to say, you know what? I'm going to try this thing out for a while, this other thing, <laughs> see how I like it. And if I don't like it, I'll come back, right? It's okay. Um, be mindful of destructive habits. So this is again, where your village comes in. Don't make giant, um, what's, the, what's the phrase? Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary circumstances right? How do you know if something's permanent or temporary? You're too close to it. Go get some help. <laughs> Go get some perspective. Bring in a coach, a trusted advisor, a friend who can help shed light on whatever you're trying to figure out. Don't do it alone. Okay. Last point, if you were taking notes, how do I know when to quit? Again, so that was, that was I actually did touch on it. So number three is, are you committed to easy or hard? right? So we talked about being, we're all committed to easy or hard. We all are. You're like, nope, not me. Yes, you too. <laughs> we're all committed to either easy or hard. When we're committed to easy and our brains naturally do this, our, our bodies naturally try to avoid pain. Our brains naturally try to avoid pain, discomfort, displeasure, right? So if something is uncomfortable or we tell ourselves that it's uncomfortable, Today, someone asked me, what's what's a chore that I don't like? And I had to really think about it. Like chores are, in my head, chores are chores. Like I don't, I don't have a chore that I love or a chore that I don't like. It's, it's all about the same. <laughs> but I picked one, right? I just picked one. So if we tell ourselves, for example, I was like, ah, I'm not the biggest fan of mopping. Just not, not the biggest fan. Okay. So, so if my floors are getting ready that like they need to be mopped. But I told myself, I don't really like that. I am more likely to avoid it, right? Because I told myself it's, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's just a story, you know, as a person thinks in his heart, so are they. It's a man thinks in his heart, it's a woman thinks in her heart, so is he or she. If you tell yourself it's hard and uncomfortable and you can't do it, your brain is going to tell you, um, skip it, avoid it leave it out, uh, forget about it, <laughs> tell somebody else to do it. Um, it'll go away if you just ignore it. Things never go away if you ignore them. <laughs> never. <laughs> it gets worse. Don't ignore the stuff. Ah. Okay. So when we're committed to hard, we quit when we start to succeed, right? We quit when something is good or gets better because we're used to this um, discomfort. We're used to this chaos. We're used to this struggle. We glory in a struggle. Um, there's people who say they want to be married, but refuse the suitors <laughs> because they're committed to not being married internally, internally committed to that, uh, that yearning as opposed to the achieving. So that sounds deep, but it, it happens to all of us in different areas. So think about consistent struggles, 
Okay. So maybe, you know, you're dealing with something right now, but think of something that's been all my life. I had to fight like, <laughs> like in the movie, right? It's just something that's been going on forever. There's, there's a commitment there. Are you committed to that particular struggle? Right. And what does it take to undo intentional activity? All right. So what I, what I will encourage you to do is to take steps to get out of your comfort zone, whatever that is, like whatever that is, we all have comfort zones, identify them, take even the tiniest step out of your comfort zone and be committed to the steps you know it takes to get you where you want to go. Okay. You might not see yourself getting any closer. Sometimes it takes, again, coach, <laughs> a, a trusted advisor, a friend to give, give you perspective. Because when you're in the thick of it, when you've been going and going and going and going and going and not seeing the result, it can be hard. But someone else can look at that same situation and say, oh my gosh, did you see? You went from here to here. I, this just happened to me. <laughs> this just happened to me. I was looking at numbers. A weight loss attempt in 2019, a weight loss attempt in 2020. Here the, the journey continues in 2022. And man, I was not happy with the numbers I was looking at. I was not happy. And I was like, this is not working. And I try so hard and it's just not working. Like I was doing the whole thing. I was doing the whole thing, y'all. And brought in some a coach and a trusted friend. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything I don't practice. And both gave perspective that I could choose, again, I could choose to stay in my pity party, my destructive habits. I could choose to give up again. I could choose the story I was telling myself. Or I could choose life. And choosing life in that instance is saying, I'm not quitting. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn up the heat. I'm going to do this and this and this and this because I'm committed, right? I'm committed. I'm committed to, if it takes me the rest of my life, I'm committed. I only get this one body, okay? On this side of heaven, I get this body. <laughs> this is what we got to work with and I will be working on it every day I'm breathing. It's just going to be what it is. If I get to my goal fast or slow, I'm just not going to quit. And y'all all heard me say it. So there. <laughs> so there. What I encourage you to do is to be committed to your growth. Be committed to being better today than you were yesterday. Make one more decision in the direction of your goal than you did the day before. And that, that's winning, y'all. That's winning. Progress instead of perfection. Okay, so instead of saying, you know, I'm far away from the end goal, say I'm an inch closer. I'm an inch closer and make uh, intermediate goals as well. I'll tell you a quick story I heard in a book and then um, and then we'll wrap for here. So in a book, I read this or I, I listened to it because I, I do the ebook thing. So I'm listening to the story um, of this man who was uh, snowed in like like stranded on the mountain with the ice and there was a big avalanche and like, he's almost dead. And he's like barely making his way down the mountain and trying to get to safety and help. And uh, he gave himself 10 minute goals to get so far in 10 minutes. And he made that like the most pressing thing ever. He didn't say, I'm going to get all the way down the mountain by X time. He didn't say, I'm going to get to safety and help by X time. He's like, I'm going to get to this far in the next 10 minutes. And he put all his effort and energy into doing that. And then once he made it there, he made another 10 minute goal and another 10 minute goal. Sometimes we, we get discouraged because the goal is so far away or it feels like, it seems like so far away. Map that thing out and say, all right, instead of you know, I, I want to get somewhere in the next four months. All right, so what do I need to do this month? Like, let's focus here and focus, okay? When we don't focus, you get nothing. You get nothing. You get nothing. That's no fun. So so focus, 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 focus. Does better for you. You can, the, the one or two things you focus on, um, you get good at, you get stronger at. What you feed will flourish. What you neglect will die. 
So the more you feed a thing, the better and stronger it is. If you're feeding defeat, the better and stronger that is, right? So stay focused. All right. Those are my encouragements to you for today. I'm so glad you joined me. If you would like more information on the sanctuary experience where we provide um, a safe space, literally a sanctuary for women, um, Sanctuary XP is a women's event. It's coming up on September 16th, 17th, and 18th in Clearwater Beach, Florida. It's three days. Ah, I cannot wait. We pour life into these women. Uh, we take them through a signature VIP healing journey. Uh, I haven't seen the likes of it anywhere else. And women leave change. And I'm really, really, really excited to recreate that space. If you would like more information on that, please check out thereboundcoach.com forward slash sanctuary. Thereboundcoach.com forward slash sanctuary. And we are more than happy to chat with you. That is myself and Coach MK. Uh, we're partners in this event. And uh, it's coming up soon. So I'm so excited. In the weeks to come, you'll get to see clips and stuff uh, that we'll be featuring from folks who have come in previous sanctuaries and we'll be sneaking peeks and all sorts of fun stuff uh, in the meantime. So if you want just general information um, about sanctuary or the things that we're doing or the book or any of those things, you can go to thereboundcoach.com. That is thereboundcoach.com. And once we wrap here, if you're on Clubhouse or if you are on here on Facebook and you would like to join us on Clubhouse for the after party, feel free to do so. Um, we are the the club name is Sanctuary XP and it says Master Key Mindset, but it's backwards. So it looks funny. <laughs> and uh, the name of the room is How to Know When to Quit. Listen, then share. You can also just search Dallas Cohen, K-O-H-E-N, Dallas, like the city in Texas. Cohen, K-O-H-E-N, over on Clubhouse. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you spending time with us this evening. If you're heading over to Clubhouse, excited to chat with you. And if not, until next time, choose life.